He said, we're going to do something to your brain. Hello and welcome to Dead Air 19. This week we're talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, a film I very much regret being in the movie, for, in the room for. Uh, the Sad Life of Boogie 2988, UK Homelessness, uh, Pet Cemetery, New and Old. We'll be going right down that road. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, are we going to be doing it rod all, all day? Down that road. Down that road. Probably. Yes. Yeah. So, we haven't done one of these for a while. So good to be back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you get a nice break with uh, talking to Damien instead? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. He sounds well. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like Damien. Yeah. No, he sound, yeah, he sounds better. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I edited it. <laughs> yeah, he seems good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why there's that hum in the background, because you edited it. Mm, Whereas is that right? I would have got it it's out not, of it. It's not because Damien was recording in... <laughs> a cathedral. Like a, I was going to say, like a train station bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 this is so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, where did you want to start? Five Nights at Freddy's, or...? Yeah, may as well. Get it out of the way. Or did you want to talk about that Praga thing first? Oh, if you want to. Uh, there was... Yeah, briefly. Sure. Uh, there was a... Um, apparently a million dollar ad on Twitter, now known as X. No, it's always Twitter. Like anyone will forget, like someone will... Like I never see any article saying just Twitter, it's always mm -hmm. Twitter. Or just X sometimes. X, formerly known as Twitter, it's usually I that. see a lot. Yeah. It's usually that. Like anyone's going to get to the point where... Like they're reading something and it says Twitter and they're like, what the hell's Twitter? Yeah. I mean, on Twitter, everybody just continues to call it Twitter. Yeah. So, we're like, no, nah, we're, we're not doing that, Musk. Yeah, everyone talks about it like, oh, it sounds like porn, like yeah. X videos and stuff. But whenever I hear it, whenever people say, X did this, X did that, mm -hmm. oh, this week on X, I just think of the Eliminator, the oh, Eliminator. Yeah. The only X. The yeah. only X. Birdman. Chris on Birdman's helmet! <laughs> From Birdman. Yeah. Chris on Birdman's helmet! Um, uh, so on, on Twitter, uh, Prager you put a big million dollar ad for one day that um, I think pretty much every user was met with and couldn't uh, dismiss the same way they couldn't add and couldn't report. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was very interesting because Prager you is no longer funded, but was had its seed funding from the Wilkes Brothers, hmm. who, as I've said before, and as I said in the Praga video, are land barons, mm -hmm. and I can't wait, I think it's Chris Wilkes is the one who's a pastor at his church, and, mm -hmm. you know, basically is preaching Gilead light yeah. on, you know, women's place should be at the home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some pretty, pretty extreme stuff, I would say. Yeah, well, I guess it depends For on me, who you ask, but yeah. From the Shires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it depends who you ask. Hitler would be like, oh, he's a bunch of liberals. It's no big deal. Yeah. I love chocolates, I love my dog. Which reminds me as well, uh, mm -hmm. Business Insider was reporting today that, um, speaking of Twitter, uh, Linda Yaccarino, our beloved leader, uh, had to step in to remove a pro-Hitler meme. Really? Yeah, uh, that was posted by a member of the Pakistani Senate. Mm -hmm. And it said, uh, it was like, I guess a picture of Hitler, I didn't see it, I read about it. Mm. Uh, oh, which, which picture of Hitler would you use? The one where he's like that? Or the, the, or the famous sort of watercolory stylized painting of him looking a lot younger than he really did marching. Mm -hmm. He still looks like a fucking weirdo. Um, Pakistani Senate, Pakistani senator posted a meme with Hitler saying, uh, the meme text said, uh, at least now you know why I did what I did, something like that. Mm -hmm. And advertisers were threatening to pull out mm -hmm. of Twitter if they didn't leave. And Lindy Yaccarino, the CEO, had to step in Business Insider reports mm -hmm. to have it removed. Like, step into the business that she's CEO of? I mean... She had to, like... What? I mean, step in as in, like, she had to... I imagine call the... 
moderation team. Mm -hmm. Maybe getting a fist fight with Elon Musk first. Do you think they're using pneumatic tubes? I hope so. It's actually just, they're massive, and it's just Musk flying around every office in the building. You know. He can, yeah. Fucking things up. He's the, he's the messenger boy. He's the, <laughs> the thing in the pneumatic tube getting sent everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, to me, this is interesting because it, it tells us a lot about social media mm -hmm. right now. And it, mm -hmm. it, it does feel like a different landscape to four or five years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, well, I mean, I've definitely seen a number of reports talking about since he took over, like, anti-Semitism has been on the rise on Twitter and, mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that, so it doesn't really shock me. I mean, I can see a difference from before he took over. That said, I, I oddly find it more entertaining now that it's back to just people screaming at each other. Um, but also, I can only handle so much of that. Yeah, I mean, I don't go on Twitter at all. Yeah. Really. Just when I show you stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And or yeah. you're dictating things for me to say. Tell them this, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> don't act like you don't. <laughs> um. Oh no! <laughs> the alternative to Twitter isn't Blue Sky. Do you remember? I would walk 500 miles. Remember that song? I remember that song. Do you remember who sang it? No. The Proclaimers. Okay. They should set up their own social media called um, Proclaim. Uh -huh. And then when you send out tweets, it's a proclamation. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looked mm. really cool in, in text. When so and so proclaimed this. Journalists yeah. are reporting out on, yeah. Okay, I don't hate it. And then what would you say for retweets? Reclaim. Just to confuse people. Mm, work on that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just spit my tea out, sorry. For the information <laughs> memorandum that we're going to present the proclaimers. Yeah. Both of them, they'll have to be both there. Yeah. Uh, do you, so I, I've tried to work out and I've tried to read articles about... Um, what is happening with social media and how their strategies changed and there's not a lot i because i i get the sense it's quite a closed off system in terms of the advertising part of their businesses mm -hmm. but i get the sense that, that there's like a an advertising ceiling or bubble mm -hmm. that we're kind of hitting mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah where um... they can't be as picky about what they do advertise. Yeah, didn't we talk about this in the last episode? Yeah. About, well, yeah, like the major advertisers being like way down on Twitter. And on Twitter, but I'm talking about... Just generally. Generally. Social media, you mean? Or like all advertising, what do you mean? Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. Because, um, uh, you know, I mean, there's so many streaming services which will make me watch like 90 seconds of ads. Yeah, but for, like, the, for the streaming yeah, service. Yeah, but like a minute watching. of that will be for the streaming service or something. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm aware of Disney Plus, that's what I'm watching. I don't or know. Whatever. It's pretty bad when you have to like fill so much advertising space with advertise here. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I guess it's hard to say because, you know, the ads that we see are going to be specific to us in some way. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it... Not on freebie. Um, no. Well, we were watching Columbo, weren't we? And mm -hmm. there was an ad for, I don't know, uh, what, what it was, like, like, teenage dance party music or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like... We see, yeah, I've definitely been seeing a lot of ads for, like, Kentucky Governor and stuff. Um... Well, yeah. Sure. Uh... I stand with Governor Bashir. I've always voted Republican, but this time I'm voting mm. for... Mm. I mean, more interesting than that to me is just, like, how much does targeted advertising contribute to, like, the feeling of your own personal bubble, you know, like, like cultural pockets, if that makes sense. You yeah, know? I... yeah. Sorry, that's not what you were talking about. No, um, I mean, I agree, but that, that's been a talked about phenomenon for, like, a decade. Well, sorry. No, I'm talking about... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about, um, 
I, I don't know, there's something going on, but I can't work out what it is, because YouTube's trying to put more ads into things, it's mm -hmm. trying to force people to watch stuff, but at the same time, um, I do wonder if they're running out of ads to serve. Mm -hmm. Not not like even, not really running out of them, but not growing at the rate they mm -hmm. want. Well, yeah, I don't know, I mean, what makes you think that? Just like the type of ads that you see, or...? Yeah, the type of ads and, yeah, the, I suppose it's mostly the type of ads and mm -hmm. the push to serve even more ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I don't know. There are a number of websites, like, legitimate websites, I think Fortune, things like that, mm -hmm. that I cannot look at on my phone. Mm -hmm. I have to look at on desktop, mm -hmm. because yeah, the ads no. just... It's impossible to look at, yeah. Yeah, like every time an ad pops up, I'll close it and it'll go right back to the top. Yeah, just scrolling shit, back to the top. Yeah, yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just wondering. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that's an interesting question. I mean, I can see what you're saying with like the types of ads. Um, but in terms of the increase in like the number of ads that various companies are trying to serve now. I think it was kind of just always going in that direction. Must make more money every quarter, you know? And if you've already hit the cap of like how many users you're gonna get, like, I don't know, which, which social media network is the biggest in terms of worldwide user numbers? Facebook? Well, I suppose it's YouTube if you count that. Uh, sure. Um, you know, I guess the question is like, how many more new u users, say, for YouTube are you going to find, like, total? Um, yeah. you know, if you're just relying on increased population, kids getting older, it's, you know, that's not fast enough. So you're saying that they've reached, you know, because it's not just users, is it? Like, uh, you know, they want users mainly in America and Europe. Mm -hmm. Like, the the price per click. Yeah, in America it's the most. It's yeah. so much mm -hmm. higher. So much higher. Yeah. Um, it's basically nothing. Like, and, if you live in India... And, yeah, you're right. They've probably captured, you know, everyone in America who's going to use YouTube is using YouTube. I think that's probably the case. Yeah. So, the, so yeah, so then once you've reached that cap, you go into serving more ads. Mm -hmm. So then, then what happens after that? Um... Probably more ads and we just end up, you know, having cable TV again. Uh, but, you know, on demand instead of... Yeah, more packaging you know. of channels has um, started already. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably the case. Like, what was it? Um, like, last night, I, th I think it's when we were watching Golden Girls. Disney um, just bought Hulu. I was actually going to say that um, there was, like, a Capital One ad um, that was, like... I think it was for Capital One. It was, like, we have good banking, blah, 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 and also get a discount on Disney Plus. Like, you know. That's not how I'm going to pick what bank I use. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I know, but it's not for you. Yeah, I know. The, in, um, when I was growing up, they used to tout, um, like, Sheffield United or Sheffield Wednesday credit cards. It's just a credit card with the football team colours on it. 30% mm -hmm. APR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, um... Um... And to answer your question further, I also think that they're going to keep trying to push subscriptions, um, mm. like with YouTube in particular. Um, you know, I don't think that their push for YouTube... You mean paid subscriptions? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it still called YouTube Red? YouTube Premium? <laughs> Whatever it is, I should know. <laughs> um, they're definitely still trying to push that, I'm sure. Uh -huh. um, and, yeah, I don't know, I mean... I wonder. I know that... YouTube specifically has made some changes with its ad selection um, policies, like being able, I want to say it's like being able to choose unskippable versus skippable ads and like making that choice, they're doing away with that. It's just going to be pre, mid, post are your options. Uh, I think they're doing away with like card options and shit like that. Oh, so they did away with cards ages ago. Yeah, oh, they still have those. All right. Yeah. Um, Used to be able to, used to have annotations and that was useful. Whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a new um, concepts thing that I can't imagine anybody using. Maybe they do. I don't know. 
actually don't watch a lot of other YouTube channels. What is it? Um, like if, uh, so it's allow automatic concepts, and I guess the idea is like it say you say a word, um, I don't know what like a specific term, then there's an option for it to automatically like have a thing come up that like defines it. Tromboni. Like you're just stealing content now, YouTube. Let me do that. Tromboni. <laughs> Lemon party. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Roseanne. Now. A lemon party. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else to say about No, we're going to end up with like seven corporations, aren't we? I imagine it's kind of going that direction, one way or another, yeah. But, you know. Actually, probably all actually... All owned by no, hedge funds in the end. Probably actually not. There's probably no need to do that, to make it that obvious. Mm -hmm. That's the real insidiousness of it, like the, <coughs> the Plutarchy that uh, Citigroup was talking about, that we now live in. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't need to do that. Yeah. I mean, we kind of already do have that, depending on the industry. Um, mm -hmm. you know, look at, you know, most media companies that are owned by like a handful. They just, they just hide it all in subsidiaries now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that have their own brand, you know, separate from, as if we can't tell the difference, you know. HBO joining with Discovery. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. That's not, not that interesting, but you can always fucking tell. And be like, oh, that could be an interesting dot. No, it's gonna this be. This is discovery. This is gonna be from discovery, so it's gonna be boring and for dum dums. Which segues nicely to <laughs> yes. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, we haven't even started on our list, man. Yeah. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, we watched it. Five Guys at Freddy's got finger banged. He was saying that all night long when we were watching it. Tell me about the. What are these five guys doing? To Freddy. And then, before we even started watching it, you were like, are we going to watch Freddy Got Fingered? I, mean, I, I, wish, I, w I wish we had watched Freddy Got Fingered. I know, you're always asking to watch Freddy Got Fingered. It used to be on TV in Britain all the time. Yeah. Yeah, like all the time. Like, I remember going into, like, pubs, mm -hmm. and it would be on. Yeah, right. It's like, this is the movie tonight, Freddy Got, fin Freddy got Fingered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can remember a couple of laughs. I haven't seen it since I was, probably since it, like, had just come out. Daddy, do you All I really, I remember that, yes. And uh, I mostly remember, I'm a farmer! Daddy, I'm a farmer! That was funny. Don't remember that. Well, shit, I guess we should watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, anyway, Five Nights at Freddy's Got Fingered. Um, What's it yeah, about? Uh, based on a you series of games. You tell them, I'm just gonna, like, veg away here. Yeah. Okay, based yeah. on a series of games. Five Nights at Freddy's. I'd only ever seen anything from the first one, but apparently there's like a hundred thousand of them now or some shit. Um, it's about a security guard at a, like a Chuck E. Cheese type restaurant um, with games and stuff and pretty much like a direct ripoff, I'm sure, of Chuck E. Cheese, including with the um, animatronic singing animals uh, and the, these animatronics uh, kill people. Kill the security guard over and over because it's a video game. But are they actually animatronics or are they? I thought they were animatronics from. I watched the like YMS playthrough of the first one. No, I mean in the but film. In the film, there was people in there. What people? Matthew Lillard, who was like one of the top build, and was one of the reasons I thought, oh, it could actually be kind of amusing because I think Matthew Lillard's hilarious, like in everything, just about everything he's been in. And I was like, oh, that'll be fun. Shows up for like two minutes at the very end. It's a rip off. <laughs> um, I don't know. What did you think? I thought it was fucking boring. Um, yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, it was boring, and uh, the it took itself very seriously. Yes. The first half an hour, like it was made well. The first half an hour had well. had a lot of yeah. like build up. And tension even, and backstory which that... would have made a lot more sense in a sort of more conventional or more interesting horror. Um, I mean, it's about animatronics that, you know, creepy animatronics. I thought it would be wacky. That's what I was expecting. Fun. 
is what I was expecting. Um, and PG-13 didn't help. That did not help at all, no. Because I thought, again, I... It's for kids. All though. I know about it is the, like, why I must play through thing that I watched, where I was under the impression that the reason this was happening is because the animatronics, when they see a person after hours in the building, maybe I'm wrong here, they think that it's like an animatronic that's not in its suit, so they're trying to get you and stuff you inside one of their suits. Which could be really fun, in yeah. terms of like... scary. Sounds scary, yeah. Um, but I guess they've added a lot to the lore <laughs> since then. Um, I want to see a Minesweeper game and see what lore they come up with with that. Oh, don't you fuck a start, because they will do it. Like, do you think the little yellow man could... He's like the Admiral or something. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, you see him with the sunglasses. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll do it, man. Didn't they make a, a a, an entire movie about Battleship? The game where you just move little pegs around? And it's also the easiest game to cheat at of all time. Because your opponent can't see what you're doing. Yeah, but they can, Who see would play that, straight? they can see you doing that with your hand. No, you just have to pretend that you're like doing this, measuring with each of the spots. Like, oh, there it is. So you cheat at a lot of board games. I think we've established, right? As a child, yeah, I kind of did. Yeah. Monopoly. Some games are just like built for it, like more than others. You can't cheat at like the game of life. It's very hard to cheat at that. You know, everybody can see what you're doing. There's no banker, like you know, can secretly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Do you get caught? No. 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 Oh. It's easy. But then you made the fateful mistake. Every criminal does. Oh. Of bragging. Oh, I was going to say, like you said, of playing against you. That was actually fun. Yeah, well, I'll keep my eye on the bank on, in Monopoly yeah. because... Well, I've always... I've never played against just one person either. Yeah. Uh, so that makes a difference. Because when people are talking, it's the perfect time to start, like, doing shit. You know, people aren't paying attention, especially if there's drinking involved. I'm just going to slip on. Oh, I, I always had a hotel there. That's not even a good way no, of No, playing against you was really hard. Was it? Like... Yeah. Because, um, how do I say this? Uh, because you're a very clever person, and um, it went on for hours, and which a lot of Monopoly games do, but um, no, I mean, I don't really know what to say. It was, it was like the most fun game of Monopoly I've ever had because it was really challenging. Yeah, we'll have to do checkers sometime, the sport of kings. Mmm. I guess we talked about learning chess sometime, but... Learning? Yeah, well, I mean, I used to play when I was younger. Like, barely. But... You don't remember the rules? I could probably tell you what pieces are allowed to do what. Horses. Horsey to king four. Horsey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, horsey. Um, Brawn to king two. You're just distracting now from... Oh, I don't really Five have anything Nights to say Freddy's about Five Nights at Freddy's. It was, yeah. it was boring. Yeah, I was um, surprised by the first 30 minutes, like, especially taking itself as seriously as it did. I was really expecting something wacky. Some... I was expecting something shit, but it wasn't the type of shit. Yeah, I wanted fun shit. That I wanted, Yeah, I suppose. I thought but, um, uh... the actual like animatronic suit things looked pretty good. Yeah. They were spooky. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine kids. It seemed boring for kids. Yeah. It was boring for me. Yeah, so. What's next? Um, right, Mandy is next. Okay. Okay. Go on then. What's um, Mandy about? Mandy is about, uh, it's kind of a surreal thing about Nicolas Cage. Um, his girlfriend is, like, kidnapped, murdered by, I mean, you can pretty much work this out in the trailer, it's not a spoiler. Also, the movie's old, so get over it. Um. And he goes on a rampage against this cult that killed her. Um, and I liked it, didn't love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I liked it. I liked bits of it. I don't think I liked the film, actually. Yeah. Uh, as a whole. I... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, go on. I was gonna say, I really liked the first half. I was like, yeah. this is... I thought yeah. the build-up was good. Yeah. Cult leader was really good. I agree. And being, like, spooky and... Like, all the cult members, it was like, um, like I was built up and ready for this rampage of some variety that I knew was coming. Um, I thought the setup was really good. They really, you know, I liked that a lot, but then it, the payoff just wasn't 
what I was expecting. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, it's super trippy, and there's like hallucinogenic drugs, mm -hmm. and it's, it's fun stuff, it's, yeah. you know, do it, it's set in the 80s, but it's also doing a sort of like retro LSD mm -hmm. perspective, yeah. which I think is really good. Yeah. Um, it seems like super heavily inspired by Hobo with a Shotgun. Mm -hmm. Hobo with a Shotgun. Never seen it. No, well, you're not really missing anything. Um, Rutger Hauer is Hobo with a Shotgun, who decides to take matters into his own hands and become a vigilante. And there's like weird sort of supernatural bikers dressed very similarly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was not expecting a supernatural element in mm -hmm. Mandy. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Yeah. There are a group of bikers who are like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But metal, yeah. But demonic, yeah. And they're definitely like not human anymore, really. I think, yeah. I mean, it's not really explained. No, they kind of is he tripping? Imply like they've taken loads of this special, like acid or something, but it's not like totally clear. Um, yeah. Yeah, I personally didn't need that element at all. I didn't really need the the biker dudes because. It was all the setup was for the payoff of these cult members and especially this cult leader. Um, and this horrible Jared I, Leto cult leader. That's right, a, a lol cow leader. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I, mean, I just got the sense that these four biker dudes were just kind of doing a job. I didn't really have any investment. I wouldn't have had a any comeuppance. Much problem, but like. Um... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like the, you know, they're like superhuman. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I, I really like the build up. I, I build up, and this could have been, uh, for me, really good if the payoff had not been Nick Cage fights these people one, one by, by one. one. Some of the, some of the one by one fights, I mean, I, yeah, like talking about it, I did like quite a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I love the photography and the sound. Yeah. Like, there were times where I was like, oh, I'm going to have to listen to this with headphones. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that. Yeah, and some of the, some of the photography was, like, really stunning. Yeah. yeah, and the effects were really good and not overdone. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so the bit where he's, like, fighting a dude with a massive chainsaw is fun. Yeah. But I really wanted Carnage. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted Carnage. I mm. wanted... Him hunting them, and yeah, I, I would have put up with. I think what was it like, ninety minutes or a bit like two, two hours? hours yeah. I think, yeah, I would have put up with easily a hundred and five minutes of just Nick Cage getting his shit together and looking really mm -hmm. pissed off, and then fifteen minutes of mm -hmm. um, yeah, taxi driver, but yeah. it's on speed and acid and yeah, and testosterone I agree with and you. steroids. I think part of the issue for me is like. <laughs> what I really wanted was like I wouldn't change like I changed like almost nothing about like the first hour or the first half and you wouldn't change um, any of the aesthetic or anything or even the story no I mean I think that there are no I mean I think that there are things that kind of can get in the way a bit and, and I'll talk about that but for the most part I really liked the first half and I really wanted like after he makes the choice to kind of you know go after these people I wanted it to kind of be like a continuous escalation but it would kind of instead be like fight one person one-on-one -on -one, and then there's like a lull and then fight another one and then like a lull and it just didn't feel like it was building the way that I wanted it to. Like when we were watching it you were saying like I wish that you know most of it had just been like you know decides to go after these people you can get rid of the like biker dudes and then it's like a, like a bigger compound with this cult and there's like a hundred of them and it's Nick Cage like terrorizing them and you know doing like clever shit to you know, just absolutely do awful things to them. Like, that's the setup was so good that I wanted it to be a really big, brutal punch. Like, I wanted to be questioning whether or not I should be enjoying it as much as I am. Like, him murdering brutally these people. Do yeah, I, mean? I, I wanted it to be like the corridor scene in Old Boy, mm -hmm. but instead of, like, 20 dudes using their fists, it's 100 dudes and Nick Cage has a shotgun. Yeah, or even keep and he's the just you know blowing them away. Yeah, yeah, you know, or just a chainsaw. You know that's fun. 
Um, yeah. He's in a change of suit. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's another thing where that makes me like not quite get over the like it point into the love it point is like I like the retro aesthetic that they were doing and I think some of those elements were there purely to contribute to the retro like aesthetic. Like I think that is what the um, biker dudes were for. Yeah, and know? the axe. Yeah, and the axe like to create this kind of almost like, yeah, like 80s like metal kind of vibe and I liked all that but I think that the revenge story itself would be better served without some of that, you know. I wouldn't change any, like, the... I thought the music and the, like, you know, photography and everything worked great. Just some of the more, like, supernatural elements, I think, kind of got in the way for me of, like, a, a more satisfying, just straight revenge story. Yeah, I agree, because the, you know, in a Hobo with a Shotgun, um, it's... It, you know, which was made not that long ago, like 15 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. But it's made to look and feel like an older 80s mm -hmm. B-movie. Um, it's, it's kind of batshit from the start. You know, you've got like people getting decapitated with um, uh, manhole covers mm -hmm. and shit like that. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, non it's deliberate nonsense. Whereas this kind of felt very serious at points. It kind of was riding a line. And uh, and then the bikers kind of made it not wacky, mm -hmm. but kind of not as serious. And yeah, I mean, and the other way to do it would be to take it further in that direction. Yeah. You know, have more, like, an escalation of weird supernatural elements that are just bananas, you know. Um, like, I, I, I kind of wanted it to be... Like, it's got all the, the score and very weird stuff. And then the last 15 minutes, just Nick Cage gets in his car. And then the metal actually starts. And it's like, holy diver! Yeah. Or just some shit like that. And mm -hmm. just him, like, yeah, driving into this compound and just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think he should be smart about it. Just just drive this truck right through, goes through people, goes into their mm -hmm. church, crashes through the wall, and then gets out and he's just, you know... He's just yeah. unloading. And like, yeah, I mean, taking it kind of further to the extreme of like, like he goes into this like knowing he's going to die probably. Yeah. Like, you know. Or not even um, thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they burn his girlfriend alive. Yeah. Like, like I said, great setup. Like that was, you know, yeah. pretty horrific. Not super realistic, but very horrific and they effective. Need, needed more gas. Yeah. It, it takes, you know, hours and hours to burn a body like that. You can't just, you know, but you know, whatever, for the sake of just, like, dramatic effect and everything, like, I'm fine with that. Um, you know, not really necessary. Uh, and yeah. the way it was shot and stuff, you know, I thought was effective for, like, you know, like the horror element, which is what you're going for. So, so w with the end that you would have liked to have seen, mm -hmm. would you like to have seen him, like, attack this compound with, like, is he, like, Big Boss? That's kind of... What you, I wanted. You can it doesn't do one, have to be one or two, right? You can do like Big Boss, where he's, or where he's basically Rambo, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. terrorizing people and hiding and stuff. Or you can just do, you know, like Taxi Driver, where it's just an assault. Mm -hmm. See, I think that I get what you're saying. Two options. Yeah, um, like I don't think that he needed to be like, you know, yeah, like. Like Rambo or like Big Boss about it, you know. Like he's just well. I'm not dude. talking about he's being not, superhero, you, you, know, you know. But but I mean, I'm just not. He doesn't have to be like a highly trained dude or anything. I meant. Um, I didn't mean that. I meant more like being clandestine and strategic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could go either way for me. Like I think that if you know we get you know them leaving and then he escapes and everything and like deciding that he's going to do this. If you had kind of like a little lull, bef like that, like a like an eye of the storm situation where there's like a little segment of just him like watching their compound for like days, you know, and like making notes and like working out their patterns and, and then this is just one option for what I think I would have preferred. And then seeing him almost like a, like a heist movie where he's, um, making plans mm -hmm. for things to do. You, we see him like buying tanks of propane and pressure cookers. pressure cookers and stuff like that, fertilizer, whatever. But we don't know exactly what they're going to be used for. And then in this rampage, it all comes together, and we get to see 
how all these plans played out. Do you know what I mean when I compare it to like a heist movie? Um, like, yeah. like an Ocean's Eleven thing you where you, you see You don't know them why planning. he's buying these pressure cookers, but then when they go off and you realize it's a distraction or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. yeah. And I think that's, you know, one way it could have gone that... I really, my big, my only real complaint is just I wanted more of an escalation. I felt like it... And more of a payoff. And more of a payoff. Like, I want it to be, you know, just more. Like, I get it, you know, the end, what he does to the cult dude, like, I like that effect, you know, um, where he crushes his head. And it's mm. clearly a physical prop. And I was like, that's fun, you know, to see that. There's a physical object there. But that also just was not enough for me. Do you know what I mean? And also, it's nonsense. Um... I'd much prefer if it were like, you know, he's trapped in his final room and trying to do his villain speech and Nick Cage is like, has blocked the entrances with like a bulldozer and is, you know, setting the place on fire or something. I don't know. I'm not creative enough to come with something. Well, what, but... That idea that we talked about ages ago where he's like in his panic room mm -hmm. and Nick Cage can't get in. So he just starts like building, um, <clears throat> like, you know, like... He just starts collecting like bundles of wood around mm -hmm. it and ends up, yeah, like setting it on fire to burn him yeah, out. Just, just something bigger, you know. Yeah, than what I wanted. Yeah, something more brutal. Yeah, um, and the pace is really where I was getting, where I, I you know, I, I lost my. It could have been something that I really loved, um, but the pace is really after that hour mark. Because at that point, I was like, yes, I'm ready for this. Like, I'm pumped to see what happens. Um, excited, you know. Yeah, it did and then, that well. And then it? as the that last hour or whatever, it did that really well, yeah. And then as it continued, I was like, oh, well, it's just some dudes doing this. And still some fun stuff. Like, I thought the giant chainsaw was hilarious. Um, and scary. And scary. And, like, a, you know, a great, again, that feels like something that you'd see in, like, an 80s B-movie. But then... When it actually gets killed with it, it's actually not that exciting. I've seen better chainsaw deaths, you know. Oh, I thought that um, was pr pretty, what, where he's laying on it. Yeah, I mean, I like the look of that and stuff, but I don't know, just, if that were, like, one of the first fights and then it, I will say, there was one part I absolutely loved that was in that second half, where he's fighting the, I think it was the first, maybe the first biker, demon dude, whatever, um, and he, like, snaps the dude's neck and then turns <laughs> and goes... And it was so funny. That was classic, ridiculous Nick, Nick Cage. Cage. Yeah, I wanted more of that. Like, I think we stopped and watched that like three times. Like, that was so funny. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I mean, I definitely like some of it. And it's something that I'm not sure if I really did like the film. But yeah, I would watch it again, you know, in a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I guess like... Uh, you know, it is a lot better than a lot of other films sort of trying to do the same thing. Totally. Um, but, yeah, I just... I wanted it to go... I don't really... I actually, like you kind of said, uh, I, I just wanted it to go more extreme somewhere. Mm -hmm. and like it, it doesn't have to be any, anywhere in particular, just... Yeah. and Well, for me, I think increasingly more extreme is what I wanted, you know. I just wanted it to be like this... You know, strong, pacey but, crescendo toward like the ultimate, whatever. But I Cage does. But, but what I'm saying is, is that the escalation that you wanted doesn't have to be violent. I mean, it could be that that makes sense. But it didn't have to. You know, it, it doesn't have to. It didn't have to be. Yeah. An escalation of violence. It could have been an escalation of like you know weirdness of tonal yeah. shifting or like um a more transition into a straight horror where Nicolas Cage becomes the hunter and we start seeing from the cult members perspective only and like the horror of like where is he what's he doing you know something yeah no yeah. mando cop outs yeah you know don't <laughs> let that girl outs. live yeah i know that pissed me off like don't let her live kill everyone yeah everyone yeah i mean i know when when that scene was happening and um Really, during like the murder of his girlfriend, where we see like each of the cult members' faces in turn, and they're all like relishing it, and then it cuts to I know the first one was funny, and then it cuts to this girl who's like looking sad, and I immediately was like, oh, well, she gets to live, I guess. I don't want that. It'd make me happy if you know, like you're still letting this happen. 
Don't yeah, I, I agree. I wanted it to be... It was like I, the, the rules of the movie. Like, I wanted her to get her comeuppance, too. I wanted Nick Cage's vengeance to be um, so, so angry that, yeah, like you said, it, it brings into question, like, oh, I was up for this, but this is just... Too yeah. Good. I wanted him. I wanted him going to the compound. I wanted him barricading himself in the nursery and setting it on fire. I know what you I mean. wanted him banging yeah. it in kids. I wanted it to be like because that setup was so strong. I wanted his reaction to be like as equally strong, to where like I yeah like I don't know. It was just I thought I had watching it like if I were like questioning my own desire to see these things, that would be more fun for me in terms of going into like a more horror direction. Yeah, I, this... I wanted him to set like a hundred people on fire, like come and see, and like mm -hmm. hear them screaming. Yeah, and. Like, he opens a door for them at one point, and then he's just hacking them as they run mm. out. Yeah, I get you. Or something, yeah. or machine gunning them. I wanted it to be yeah. horrible and, and vicious. And it doesn't have to be extremely complicated to be like that. I mean, I know you didn't really like this movie as much as I did, but, like, the end of Midsommar, I thought, was, like, really horrific. Yeah. With just the big wooden, like, thing, and people are inside, and they're like, take this medication and it won't hurt. And then they are, like, being lit on fire, and it absolutely hurts. And you just hear, like, screaming and... I thought that was pretty good. Wicker man. And, and pretty simple. Oh yeah. God! Oh Jesus Christ! Not the bees! No, not that way. I know. <laughs> yeah. The bees! <laughs> God, he was great in that too. <laughs> we watched a couple of Nick Cage things after that, so it definitely got us in the mood for him. Oh man, the Humanity Bureau? That was something else, yeah. Um, the bit where he's given his speech, was it that one or the other one? He's given a speech at the end and he's like, I'm a veteran and, uh, you know, I was... He's like, I was in the Marines, and he's wearing like an army private uniform. That wasn't the Humanity no, Bureau. That, that was the other one. Yeah. 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 They were. Yeah. Yeah. Would you remember what he, that was like, called? Giving, I can't remember, but he's like giving a little speech, and then he stops and he kind of goes, and then continues the speech. And I felt like it was like a breaking the fourth wall moment with Nick Cage. He's like, God, I should have <laughs> paid my taxes. <laughs> That's the one take I'm doing. Yes, that's it. <laughs> it was. It, I loved it though. Yeah, I can't remember what that one was called. I'd have to look in our watch history. It's not worth watching. It's not. No, but what a mess. Yeah. What's next? Anyway, yeah. Uh, oh, did you want to do a brief mention? Um, no. No. Well, of what? Signalis. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Thanks to Sydney for recommending Signalis. Uh, also recommending Mandy, but it's like I knew Mandy existed, but I never mm -hmm. heard of Signalis. Yeah. It's um, an indie game, um, very much inspired by Resident Evil, the old ones, mm -hmm. and Silent Hill, um, but it's sci-fi, I never heard of it, mm -hmm. and Christina hasn't played it yet, yeah, so, so we're, we're not going to talk about it a lot. We're not going to talk about it a lot, we're going to save it, but I, I played it, and I completed it in two days. Yeah, <laughs> you were into it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm going to play it too, I've just still been playing WoW and stuff, and... It was really good. Yeah, I'll probably play it this week, so. It, um, I see, I'm not really a big fan of that genre. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, I played those games as a kid. Survival horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like them. And and the, very much the Resident Evil mm -hmm. type of survival horror, like that perspective and clues and running from room to room to, oh, there's mm -hmm. a key in this room, but I can't get to this key without yeah. another key. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, and it does that well. But the the setting is really interesting, and the law is. I wouldn't say even that the law is really deep, because mm. my biggest complaint was, oh, I wish there was more. But not um, a bad complaint to have. Yeah. The law is interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, thought provoking. Cool. I liked it a lot. Well, as somebody who absolutely loves survival horror games, um, really, yeah, uh, I look forward to it. So. Really? Do you not get a little bit scared if there's some water? Um, that's different. Okay. Water is scary. Uh, but, you know. Face your fears. Subnautica. So, just water then. Any, any other survival game where you can just cruise through it? Water is... Just deep water that you can't see through is scary. There's monsters and shit No, I get that. But, but what about Resident Evil, the newer ones? Weren't you scared when you played those? Uh, no. I mean, there's some jump scares and stuff. But... No, I don't think they're particularly scary. What about the caves in... Oh, um, and um, the, the forest. forest. Those were scary, yeah. But it wasn't that bad. 
I mean, it's just, again, it's more of a jump scary thing because it's dark and you don't know where these things are. Man, I really could have loved that game if it didn't have such a dumbass story with the ending and stuff. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, some of those, like, we had fun with that. Getting followed by the this cannibals that are just, like, staring at you and the way they react differently and stuff. That was fun to play with you. Anywho. Yeah, it was good. Um... Five minutes later. And we're back. So, do you have much to say about Pet Cemetery and Pet Cemetery the remake? Oh, um, yeah, just a little bit. Uh, Sorry, let me. I'll start again. He's sure. making. Mm. Lay down. And we're back. So, do you have much to say about Pet Cemetery? Yep, just a little bit. Uh, we watched that new one whenever it came out. Um, and that wasn't particularly good. It wasn't really awful, but it wasn't great. Um, and then wanted to watch the old one. Yeah. Um, which I hadn't seen in many, many years, and it was great. They, they both have the same story. <laughs> yeah, just they swap the little boy for the little girl in terms of who dies. It's the only real big change, yeah. The story is a family uh, moved to a new house by a small but busy road. And in Maine, because it's written by Stephen King. In Maine, because it's written by Stephen King. <laughs> and there is a supernatural cemetery uh, just by them uh, where you can bury an animal and it will come back to life. Uh, but kind of demonic. Yeah, with no, You mean with no ramifications whatsoever. They, they live happily ever after. Credits. Yeah, a demo yeah. it comes back, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, the family's little kid boy or girl uh gets hit by a truck in an act of gross parental negligence yes <laughs> and um you know the grief-stricken parent then buries a child and uh, everything's great yeah yeah um, um yeah well the, okay so the this the older one mm -hmm. with herman munster mm -hmm. down that rod yeah um, he must have been paid by road yeah, right. Time he said road. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, not having seen it for many years, you know, I still think of like the South Park stuff making fun of it. Yeah, what I got on that rod. Yeah. Just showing up randomly. But like rewatching it, it's like every other line that guy has. It's a and lot. It's great. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I suppose like Mandy, like I didn't really like it, mm -hmm. but I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's charming. Yeah. You know, but yeah. it's it's nonsense. Yeah. But the new one isn't charming and nonsense. Yeah, it's just more nonsense and a bit dull. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I kind of thought the older one was a bit dull, but there were we enough had the hilarious rod down that rod guy. Yeah. Um, but also like the greatest cat acting of all time. I'm pretty sure they used six different cats. Yeah, I can't remember how many, but six. Yeah. Uh, like we found a cat that cuddled, a cat that hissed, hissed at everybody. Uh, you know, a cat that was a bit of a whatever, and just had like different cats that all looked the same that did, did these things. But while you're watching it, it is hilarious. Like, wow, that cat is amazing. Just like, you know, like, like just the way it. I don't know. Yeah. It it was uh, effective and adorable. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so, and also the, um, sorry, go ahead. So yeah, so we liked Herman Munster going rod, and we liked the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also did like the, um, baby boy puppets from time to time. The bit where, like, I don't know if it's, I think it's the dad, like, looks in the attic, and we see, like, the little boy's face. It's like a, like a four-year-old, probably at best, yeah. being this demon baby, and, like, looking, like, <laughs> spooky, and then, like, cut... And there's like a puppet just like being thrown at him <laughs> and it was great. And like the little boy's face and then obvious like puppet hands like doing stabby motions. It was charming. Yeah, it was charming, but yeah. only because it's like 30 something years old. The limitations are what really makes it charming, I think. Yeah. Other than down that road. Yeah, I mean, the way they handled the uh, child death was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, that child got destroyed. Yes, right? Like, There's no know. body to bury, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, what would it come back like? Like, a pile of something. Yeah. 
that's kind of that would be more interesting, right? If it came, it wasn't just demonic. It was. It turns into the blob. Or it's you know it's just broken and it's constantly asking for you to kill it, but you can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I mean, I got nothing to say. It was very charming. If you haven't revisited the old pet cemetery in a long time, you should because yeah. it's fun. I preferred thinner. Yeah, I haven't watched that in years. I read the book on yeah. that one. Was it a book or a short story? It was a book. Yeah. I want to say by Richard Bachman, pen name. Yeah. Uh, it's about a man um, who's got a job doing fences in this small small, small town, uh, but at night he goes around putting paint thinner on the fences to remove all the paint, and he's like, looks like your fence needs another go. It was a Tom Sawyer situation. Then he Tom tricks, Sawyer wasn't he tricks so other people into yeah. repainting them for <laughs> he sets up a franchise, two separate franchises that don't know about each other. One's painting and one's thinning, mm -hmm. thinner. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd have to rewatch that movie. It's been a long time, but from what I recall, it. I remember when that gypsy touched really me and said, "Boulder." <laughs> Boulder. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Shorter. <laughs> well, that would be awful because you keep getting shorter. You can't. You, you, know, mm, you can't yeah. get bolder than mm, bald. That's fair enough. Yeah. You could get balder. What are you talking I could about? get balder, yeah. Anybody can get balder, I guess. Uh, how could someone Crash who's that. completely bald... How could no ho Hank get balder? No skin. <laughs> it's just a scalp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no skin. And then eventually it'll just be exposed brain. You remember when ho Hank showed up on season two of The Wheel of Time? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, uh, I just wanted to give a brief mention. It was part of my Halloween viewing leading up to Halloween, mm. you know, because everything that's on every streaming service is a horror movie, so may as well. But it was fun. What's next? Next, Boogie. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't know how much I have to say. You have loads to say. You had loads to say. Well, why don't you explain who Boogie is? Why don't for the you... people who are blessed to not know. <laughs> Why don't you explain? Well, I don't know anything about his yes, early stuff. Do. No, I mean, you told me about it, but I don't know. Like, he was like an early YouTuber who did, like, sketch comedy type stuff, playing, like, characters. Right? Uh, he used... Well, yeah, he used to play a character called Francis, which was him in a different shirt, which I respect. And sure. um, doing a different voice. And he was pretty famous for that, and also mm -hmm. he was pretty famous for blogs where he was candid and <coughs> open about his struggle with his weight mm -hmm. and eating disorder. And this is a uh, documentary on YouTube, a 55 minute long video. Yeah, the um, sad sort something of... life of... I can't remember the full title. Not important. What did you write down? You, you read I did write... something really aggressive, like uh, the, the sad, the, pathetic the sad... life of... <laughs> <laughs> the um, irredeemable fatty. Uh, no, it was like the the sad, depressing, totally preventable, feel bad for me life of Boogie. Three nine eight eight because you got his name wrong. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, I saw I wrote three nine eight eight on this one. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so he he has four million subscribers. Mm -hmm. When I started YouTube, he was. Prob I mean, I don't know if he was one of the biggest, but he was definitely one of the most recognisable names. Mm -hmm. Like if you said, I like Brookie2988, people would know who you meant. Mm -hmm. We don't know who he was. And he had 4 million subscribers then. Mm -hmm. And um, as has been documented, and as we talked about on A Dead Air mm -hmm. a while back, uh, he, I guess, had a mental breakdown or mm -hmm. maybe... Maybe not, maybe just the facade fell, but he ended up doing... He, he, so he cultivated, um, I suppose, an audience seeking wholesome content. Mm -hmm. Like I say, he was candid in talking about being obese. Like, he was like 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd been abused as a kid and he had an eating disorder. But, you know, he was trying to get his shit back together. And, mm -hmm. you know, now he was popular on YouTube, he had a bit of money, he had a house, he had a wife, and then, um, and then, yeah, cracks started showing where he would 
do live streams and talk like really horrible shit mm -hmm. that you see some of in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he got a divorce and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and, um, went weird and he came yeah he came across as a creep. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I like I said, I hadn't seen any of his old stuff. The only reason I knew anything about him at all um, is because I know that you. Like, still, I, like, followed him on Twitter from, like, years ago. Mm. So if I'm, like, looking at your feed mm -hmm. and I see that he posts, like, every single day just about and it's all the same stuff of, like, I'm broke and sad and depressed. I'm going to lose my house. Why won't more people watch my channel? Um, you know. That's a hook right there. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's that was the only way that I was familiar with him at all. And had to like ask you about it at some point. Like, who's this fucker? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, um, this documentary um, on YouTube, you know, I say it's yeah, like 50 minutes long. Just a dude following him around for, I guess, nine months. I mean, not um, all of nine months. Yeah. There's bits sure. where it's like three months later. And yeah, like fair that. enough. Yeah. Over the course of nine months, let's mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Um, where. More or less a lot of the same, like, I mean, I guess the reason I wanted to talk about it is, like, just how baffling I find it. Um, you know, talking about, like, um, I make $6,000 a month, my mortgage is 2000 I'm about to go bankrupt. A lot of the documentary, like, I think it even starts with his financials. Yeah. Like, we have unfettered access to mm -hmm. Boogie's financials for some yeah. reason. Uh, yeah. And it was, like... Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess that's cool to be open about it, like losing $600,000 on crypto and spending, what did he say, like a quarter of a million dollars on prostitutes in three years or something. Um, and yeah, um, it just, what an interesting, I guess the what makes it interesting to me is like, is this some kind of like social media strategy or, you know, like how much deception is going on here? Because it seems like now his whole brand is, like, getting people pissed off at him for the things that he says and does. And then, I guess, making a living off that? I don't know. Did you ever hear about, um, the, I think it's like a lost gospel, the thing about John the Baptist and Jesus and the parable of, um, the shit smirrors? where they visit a town mm -hmm. and there's all these people rubbing shit in their own face and Jesus is like, why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. And John says, um, some people are doing it for attention, some people are doing it because they're deeply hurt, and some people just eat shit. I have not heard that, no. Yeah. I think you made that up right on the spot. I did. <laughs> Uh -huh. Because, I mean, that is kind of the, has been actually really his content mm -hmm. for like the last seven years. Is trying, more well, five years, mm -hmm. four years, is trying to work out what the fuck he thinks he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess before going further, I would also say, like, don't bother watching it. Um, so, so, in fairness, uh, from what I can tell, it's a new guy on YouTube. I or? I don't I'm not familiar with him. S I, a small ish YouTuber. I just looked at his channel briefly. He's got like four thousand subs. I yeah. thought that the documentary was well made. Mm -hmm. I thought that you know the problem, the problem with it, you the know, subject. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's not not the guy's. I think his name was Mike Clum. It, yeah. it, you know, it's a documentary without an end. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have an arc, mm -hmm. uh, and again, not his fault. But really, mm -hmm. this is like. I don't know if it's, it's fair to say the documentary is positioned, but like Boogie has positioned himself as like, this is my rock bottom, mm -hmm. take a look. Yeah. But it isn't his rock bottom. Mm -hmm. He's making six and a half grand a month on YouTube. Well, with no children. With no children. He's got a two grand mortgage. He could make that work. Yeah. Th this isn't rock bottom. Rock bottom is more like Spoonie, where you're making like $300 on Patreon a month. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. Constantly talking about how you're going to lose your house. I'm sure mm -hmm. Boogie has said that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, talking about losing his house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, every day. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
well, I mean, not like every day, but that's definitely like the only thing I ever see him posting is like, <coughs> um, I mean, he was promoting this documentary for like a week, like every day. Well, this is going to ruin me. This is going to make all my fans go away and everyone's going to hate me. But I'm just trying to be honest. I try to be honest and then people get mad at me for being honest. Um, it just is weird. A weird sort of like... I mean, it, it comes across to me as like trying to cultivate a new brand. And the brand is no longer like I'm doing comedy on YouTube. The brand is now um, say stupid shit to get people pissed off for no reason. So that I could that they'll watch. I don't know. Like, what is what is well, going on here? Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying. This this is kind of what's interesting because there there are loads of other YouTubers who've fallen, mm. if you like, or become less popular, mm. and some of them have taken it in their stride really well. I can't remember the guy's name, but was it Smosh? Maybe, or maybe I'm thinking of someone else. They had a really early YouTube channel which was really popular. Probably really before mm. YouTube was monetized Gaming well. Gaming channel? Okay. I can't, Sorry, I yeah. You know, and the guy, you know, came back to YouTube and he does blogs and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's not, he does blogs about whatever interests him, not blogs about, like, I'm not as famous as I was. Mm -hmm. You know, that happens to everyone. I mean, yeah. do you think fucking Harvey Keitel is, you know, sitting around going like, Oh, I've not been in a big movie for years. Yeah, like right. You, 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 had a, you had your moment, and it was really good and big. Yeah, yeah. And Boogie2988 had a lot of fame, and it wasn't even like people got bored of him. He turned people off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it almost felt deliberate. Yeah. And, yeah, the interesting thing about him, like you say, is, is there a strategy? And it's almost, it's almost like so meta, you get to the point where it's like, is the strategy to make me think, is there a strategy? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get into the, almost like the Princess Bride thing of like, well, I know you know that, I know you know that. Yeah, it just, yeah, and you just go cross-eyed, yeah. Like Austin Powers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well. But, do, <coughs> well, okay. The Boogie 2988 we saw here, where he's saying things like, um, he's going from, I fucked my life up, it's no one's fault but mine, mm -hmm. um, to, I deserve this, when he's, like, going out and buying shit. Yeah, I deserve to do like this, that. I deserve, yeah. Um, it, is one of those the real boogie, and one of those a character? Are both of them characters? Yeah. Or is it the same person, and he's manic? Yeah, um, that, I mean, maybe, yeah, that could be the case, I mean... The one bit that was actually kind of interesting where he's got his friends over for like a Magic the Gathering game and they seem like pretty normal dudes. They're just like, we just want to play Magic. And he's like, you guys, you know that what, like what I that, they say, they want magic, just want to play Magic, man. Want to play magic, man. Just want to play Magic. It's your turn. Um, yeah. Where And then Boogie, like, I don't know, where it's like, you guys know that like I don't have a lot of money, right? You know every time I invite you over here, I buy like $300 of pizza and Taco Bell? All for you guys, and I really can't afford to spend that anymore. It's not fair. And they're like, we don't ask you to yeah. buy food. You offer, and then we eat it. You don't have to do that anymore. And they're like, let's play magic now. Like, yeah. I mean, that was interesting, their reaction, because it didn't seem feigned. It seemed like, number one, like, they're totally used to this. Like, this happens all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, like, they're... Uh, fully aware that there is a camera going for a documentary about him. Um, and yeah, that was just, that was like an interesting little, I think, window of like, yeah, maybe a lot of this is just all bullshit, you know. And then he went, he goes from that to, like, in the same sitting, <laughs> um, talking about like, when are we going to get some girls, when are we yeah. going to get some prostitutes? When are we going to get some prostitutes over she for magic says night? That. Yeah. And like, they're, they're just nerds who are like, I just want to pl Like you said, I'm going to get them, man. Like they're yeah. looking at him like, shut up. Yeah. Yeah, like borderline like, eye rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, uh, never. You know never. Like, how embarrassing would it be to get like, what, like two prostitutes that we're going to... Are we... 
So what, are they going to come and we're going to bang them? Or are they just going to watch us play Magic the Gathering? Yeah, That's going to be really weird. Come look at my action figures. You know, like, what's the plan here? Do you want some Taco Bell? It's over there, girls, if you want any. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was weird. Um, and just... But you say it's not worth a watch, it sounds... I mean, it was fascinating to me. Um, you know, from a sort of, like, psychological point of view. I like... Really, I mean, I don't know, I like being baffled sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like a puzzle I'm trying to work out, and uh, I don't think there's any sorting it. But um, but otherwise, no, I mean, it's not really worth watching, because <clears throat> if you want to see a dude with, like, more money than the average American, with no kids... Uh, lolloping no, around. Lolloping around, complaining about his life, um, and... Uh, talking about all the prostitutes he slept with, one of which who they talked to, who was like, I got out of being a prostitute because of him. Um, I mean, that stuff, it is kind of fascinating, but also, um, I, I wouldn't encourage anybody to contribute to this by watching it. You know? Yeah, yeah, the, yes, I mean, I agree. You know, there's definitely bits that I feel Boogie put on for the camera, knowing it was outrageous. For that purpose. For yeah. that purpose, so that people would talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he talks so much about how he's you know, on the brink of being absolutely destitute. Mm -hmm. And then, well, I had to buy Diablo 4. Yeah. Well, I had to buy this sound bar. Yeah, because my TV is crackling. Um, mm. And then it fixed itself, and now I don't need it. What am I going to do? Oh, my God. Return it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that time we didn't have a TV for like four months? Because it broke. It wasn't that big a deal, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. it rings a bell. What did, <laughs> yeah. what did we do? Did we watch your phone? Yeah, we watched everything on my phone. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, what we did not do was make a video. I don't have a TV. I don't have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Um... Yeah, there's a bit as well where he's going on about, like, TV is my only entertainment. Mm. That's why I had to do it. Yeah, and then uh, he's you like... You have a girlfriend. Yeah. You uh, have a computer. Uh, you I, have two dogs. I see Twitter. You're on vacation all the time. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You have um, a phone. And, you know, you, you have no space in your damn house because it's full of junk. You know, collectible shit. Uh, like, the dining room was, like, walled with, like, rare comic books and collectibles and shit. Like... Yeah. I, I think that, you know, the, you're that bit doing as, fine. As well in his, um, where they're talking about, like, I can't afford to get you dinner anymore when you come over. Um, that's in his, I guess, rec room. Mm -hmm. it, it was lined with, um, what do you call them, arcade machines. Mm -hmm. Like replica arcade machines. Yeah. Yeah, right. I still kind of watched him when he did that deal mm -hmm. to get them installed. Oh, right. Yeah, he, he got yeah. a sponsorship, sponsorship from, from, right. the, from the deal, and like all the comments were all about like, I bought one of these because of you, and the quality was terrible. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, sponsorships. Yeah. 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 Um, so, there you go. Yeah, and I mean, just right. so much of it did feel like, and I guess part of the question is like, what's the footage that we saw versus the footage that was captured? Because it would be like complaining about how you know, I don't, I don't have any money. All I have is four thousand dollars of expendable income a month, and then him ordering like twenty dollars of Taco Bell for lunch and like twenty dollars of Taco Bell for dinner, and it just, if it, you know, maybe that's just a matter of editing, but it also just seems like it's, it it's designed to outrage, because maybe that's all he's got now. But, but on his Twitter, I see people all the time like, I'm still a fan. Why don't you just go back to, like, doing comedy videos, and why don't you do, like, game reviews? I'd find that really interesting. People are like, yeah, I'd love to see some game reviews. That'd be cool. No. What? No, 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 my life sucks. Why doesn't he? Um, I imagine that he probably is, this is just a guess, based on absolutely nothing. Um, he had his kind of, you know, decline in viewership, and then found that when he started, that the... The being outrageous actually helped stymie that a bit, perhaps, um, and like trying to piss people off was perhaps more effective, you know, I don't know, I mean, I, I can't say, 
Uh, mm. But it is baffling. Yeah, it's almost like self-sabotaging. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What's next on the docket? Yeah. Uh, next. Oh, yeah, this is more a thing for me. Metal Gear 3 remake. Um, one that you... Which ones have you played? One, one four, one five. One and four and five, yeah, right. Um, yeah, so... Well, I only recently found out that they're doing this. Um, <coughs> Metal Gear Solid is a series of espionage type games uh, set in an alternative universe um, not unlike our own universe where real politic rules the day but from the perspective of a madman mm -hmm. yeah they're talking about like mujahideen and stuff in five and then in giant mecha robots with penis guns and shit um yeah i love it i love metal gear i've played all of them um actually i didn't play Whichever one takes place in Cuba or something. I didn't play that. Hmm. Um, oh, you mean, isn't that the Phantom Pain? No, it's no. not. Um, no, not the like little prequel thing to that. Yeah, no? No. Um, there's one that, it was on a different system. I can't recall. But uh, Okay. What do you have to say about MGS3? Um, yeah, so and they the have recently um, done uh, the Metal Gear Masters Collection. Which, from what I can tell, is just a port onto Steam. Right. That has, like, pretty... Well, when I looked at it last week, pretty terrible reviews. People saying, like, it does not function well. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a good port. Just, like, you know, uh, voices getting desynced from things that are happening and um, all kinds of weird bugs and stuff like that. Um, and I was like, okay. But from what I can tell, that it was just a port. But then they're also doing a remake of Metal Gear 3, which is one of my favorites, Snake Eater, where it's all new graphics, um, and there's So some... it's rebuilt, is it? Yeah, they're using the same voice files from the original, sure. so they're well, not should... doing, yeah, I, you know, yeah. they're not completely redoing it. Right, but, but then there's some is it a different engine? Um, yes, they are, right. uh, they're doing it on, um, Unreal. So the, they are re redoing it, just not the voices? Yeah, yeah, they're, um, it's going to be uh, yeah, okay. on Unreal Engine. That sounds good. Um, I guess. Uh, personally, I love the Fox Engine. Um, but anyway, uh, there's some debate about like how much of gameplay is going to change that I found kind of interesting and like reading on Reddit and stuff, people's opinions, because it seems pretty split. Um, personally, um, seeing like the initial kind of teaser stuff of like, you know, here's the wildlife of Metal Gear 3, and it's like, here's a buzzard from the original game, and then here's one in the new game. Like, yeah, that looks way more realistic and stuff, but where's the charm? Like, the color palette is all changed. Mm. Um, people kind of see enough. a lot of people being like, yeah, they took the piss filter off, because there's like a, a yellow <laughs> yeah. tinge to most of the game um, <clears throat> that I find really atmospheric mm -hmm. myself. Um, and a lot of people saying like, well, you know, I don't see a problem with getting rid of that. You know, it looks way more realistic, way better. And like, it does like, you know, uh, there was a bit of like a frog swimming in water and there's like ripples coming off the water and, and then a frog like from the original and like, yeah, that does look graphically better. But personally, I don't want any gameplay changes, but there are also loads of people saying that they do want that. Um, and I don't know if anybody's old enough to remember Twin Snakes, the remake of Metal Gear Solid for, I want to say GameCube? Yeah. It was terrible. Oh yeah? Yeah, because they added all kinds of additional shit. Like, the core gameplay was the same, and then they added in, um, Metal Gear Solid 2 had already come out, and they added some of the gameplay elements of that, which is fine. Like what? Um, like, just some of the, um, like, mechanics, like, basic mechanic stuff. Like, just very small. Um, uh, I struggle to even give you a, an example. Um. Okay. But... What they also did with Twin Snakes is, like, try to make it, like, okay, this is an example. There's this bit, I know I've already told you about this, but where you're in the sniper wolf battle. Oh, yeah. And you're, like, you know, sniper wolf shoots you from, like, down this big, you know, alley type thing or whatever. And Snake kind of, like, jumps back and is like, oh, and hides behind the wall. And in the Twin Snakes remake, they had him do, like, a super backflip. Um, I was like, why? That's yeah. not Snake. Yeah, he's an old man. You know? Yeah, that, 
Snake's like <laughs> smoking a cigarette and like, ah, fuck this shit. Snapper. Snapper. Um, Boss it down. Maybe and I just. Snapper. My fear is that they might do some stuff like that. Like, um, I just. But it was a bit like that in MGS3. Like, you showed me some clips and it was. Oh, there's plenty of nonsense. Yeah. Um, that's the fun in Metal Gear, is the nonsense, in my opinion. You know, like, it feels so real when it's, like, your snake, like, you know, depending on how you like to play, crawling through, you know, plants and, like, grasses and wearing camouflage and, like, waiting for a dude or, like, standing against a tree, like, painted up like your tree bark, waiting for a DS exactly to walk by and go, Ugh. Um, it's so charming. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and then you get to like, I'm a dude who controls bees, and that's so ridiculous. Like that's the fun for me. You know, yeah. This is the Shagohod, an impossible piece of technology that it's just like a giant tank that's going like a hundred miles an hour with like a rocket engine on it, <laughs> and it's fun. You know, ridiculous nonsense. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I don't know how other people are feeling, but um, it definitely from reading people's kind of like perceptions um, and reactions to like the, that initial teaser. It sounds like a lot of people want them to add gameplay stuff. Hmm. And I just do not because I think that that game is so tight on its own. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I haven't played like One it. of my top five favorite games of all time. Personally, I know you haven't played it, so. Didn't want to say too much because you'll start drifting off. Yes, go on that. What is next? <laughs> next. Uh, oh, yes. UK Homelessness. Oh, um, the UK Home Secretary, um, Braverman, I think her name is, has uh, said that, uh, at least for some people, homelessness in the UK is a choice and that they're, uh, they're often people from abroad mm -hmm. and she wants to uh, <coughs> move some homeless tents and punish or fine charities that provide homeless people with camping equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the reaction is, is, the reaction that I've seen has been, it's disgusting and a war on homeless people and no, it, it, is. Yeah. it is not a fucking choice yeah yeah um yeah um yeah well i know when you, you know, were telling me that it made me think of um myself like yeah you see this all the time like um <clears throat> i saw like an article like doing the rounds a while back that was like uh why are so many young people choosing to live in refurbished camper homes and sheds and tiny homes like because housing's too expensive like is there you know yeah it was trying to make an argument of like you know because it's like they want to live smaller and be more efficient and it's you know fun or whatever yeah, it's wh cool why do rwandan mm. cocoa farmers not send their children to college yeah why do they right. choose not to send their children to harvard yeah yeah why don't illiterate people choose to be able to read and write better yeah Mm. 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 Yeah. Mm. How considerate. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. No, I mean, I after you told me that this morning, I glanced at some social media stuff, and yeah, I mean, the reaction has been pretty much universally the same. You know, how dare you kind of thing. Um, you know, try and live in a tent for a, yeah. a couple days and tell me if you'd choose this, you know, and... I mean, I don't know anything about her or her background, but I have to imagine that um, she didn't come from a homeless family. Yeah. I don't know anything either. Um, yeah. Yeah, but fuck right off. What a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean... Just pretend to have a bit of empathy, perhaps. You know, that would be my advice. Pretend. Do you think that homelessness is going to only get worse? Mm -hmm. Me too. I wonder if they could hear that. Surely. George's stomach growling. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's going to get worse. I think we've seen a lot over the last year about AI 
It's going to take everyone's jobs. Mm -hmm. And other articles say that AI is going to enable the wealthy to concentrate their wealth. Mm -hmm. um, which maybe is the case. I think that's going to happen anyway. That's been happening for about 20 years. Probably more like 40. More like 40, really, but, but in the last 20, it's sped up in terms of them shielding their wealth from tax, mm -hmm. at least in America. Uh, yeah, I wonder where we're heading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, see, if we get to the point where we can robotize industry, mm -hmm. then yeah, the a nation's manpower will be less important than ever mm -hmm. in terms of its natural resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't know where we're going. Dystopia. Or is that, baby? I know, but it can get worse. Yeah. Oh, it can always get worse. Yeah. Man, I haven't been to boring dystopia in a while. Good. Let me think of that. You're living it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. I don't know what the solution is to. There is none. We're all gonna die. I think usually yeah. what would. And what I think has happened in the past is, so take for example the the housing stuff, mm -hmm. the housing market, no one, no one can afford a house, no one can afford to rent, mm -hmm. unless they, they rent somewhere tiny. Um, you know, it's a concerted effort by the industry mm -hmm. and the people that they influence to not build enough new houses mm -hmm. to match population so that house prices go up above inflation. Yeah, and loads of houses being bought up by, um, yeah. like, a, like, big securities firms and then just being turned into rentals, Airbnbs, you know. And then um, what would usually happen, I would think, would be that this would become such an issue that the people affected would be so numerous that they would have a voice <laughs> where, you know, members of parliament or congress people start taking it up Mm -hmm. properly in force, not just the odd one. Um, and then there would be eventual reprieve mm -hmm. of like, well, we're okay then, we're going to do a deal and build 400,000 houses over the next 10 years, sort of shit. That doesn't really solve it, but mitigates it. I think mm -hmm. that's that's been the cycle. And I wonder now if the sort of uh, the bottom 90% of society uh, has lost sufficient control mm -hmm. or sufficient influence over their their leaders that that's not going to happen this time. Mm -hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I think I get you, yeah. Hmm. What? Sorry. No, I'm just bit, bit serious. thinking, sorry. Um, yeah, I don't... Working. I don't really know what to know. I don't know what to say. Um, I mean... A lot of this stuff, I guess, it depends on framing and how you look at it as well, because... Um, because the bottom 90% never had real influence anyway. Yeah. Um, well, maybe. Only tangentially related, but yeah, I think you mentioned something about this. Um, I was read a, an article the other day, I want to say it was like Business Insider or Forbes or something, where um, I think one of those were... It was talking about um, the average American is now a millionaire, um, but yeah, really? good old good old playing with statistics, yeah. Because I think people when they hear like the average American, they think that's like the typical American, um, instead of the people at the top have even more exponentially increased their wealth, um, and so the average goes up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it was saying, like, you know, you include, like, assets, like housing. You know, the average American is a millionaire. Uh, no. No. Not in the way that people like to think of averages. So, so you're saying that if we put everything in a big sieve and shuffled it all out so it was all even and flat, every person would be a millionaire. <laughs> right. And then society <laughs> would collapse because <laughs> no one would want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then there'd be inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. if you were a millionaire, would you work at Taco Bell for $500 a day? <laughs> no, of course not. Mm. Um, yeah. 
I mean, I think the idea that nobody would do anything is just kind of nonsense, you know. If everyone People was like a millionaire. To, well, I mean, if everybody was a millionaire, then being a millionaire wouldn't really mean anything, would it? You know? No. Um, you know, things would just inflate. And, um, hmm, I don't know, things to think about. I think when you, I don't know, save that for some other time. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful, boring dystopia, though. Yeah. Just people choosing to live in tents. Yeah, yeah. All the people who have um, been buying, like, literal garden sheds and turning them into houses, they're all choosing to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's cool. That's why they're doing it. I mean, you know, they, they could have just set themselves on fire, couldn't they? So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well... Um, that's the end of the list. Okay, well, I guess the last thing I wanted to say was, yes, we've been watching Golden Girls. Oh, yeah, it's great. Uh, yes, but the p Peacock, which it's on, is terrible. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Ugh. 90-second commercials on. all yeah. the time. One of the commercials was Gordon Ramsay advertising something or other. Mm-hmm. And he introduces himself as... Um, I don't know, something like... Salty, charming, wholesome. He definitely says wholesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's funny. Like, the guy's a fucking bully. Yeah. Yeah, if you you look into his history, his culinary history, when he started, that's how he got ahead, was being a vicious bully mm -hmm. in the kitchen. You know, if he did what he did now, mm -hmm. uh, he'd have, you know, had disciplinary hearings and have been personally sued. Yeah. Uh, he, fuck him. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, um, because, yeah, I saw that they're bringing back, um, Kitchen Nightmares. Uh... Oh, well, I will watch that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought that they wouldn't bring that back because, yeah, because, you know, the bullying and... I mean, pretty much the... just, like, emotionally abusing all Hell's these Kitchen people. Hell's Kitchen was worse. Uh, yeah, Hell's Kitchen's way, way worse. worse. Yeah, way worse. Um, and he's done all these, like, more family-oriented, like, Master Chef kids and garbage like that it's um, fucking shit but it's interesting that they are bringing it back and i wonder if the tone is going to be different at all well are you stupid like jesus this is workplace abuse yeah it is i mean so you know some of it's more justified than others yeah but um no, i but mean then... in the first season he you know of the british one he's like mm. like threatening to fight people and stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and then the rest of the British one, like the ones that I've seen, he's like way more chill than the American version. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, I can respect a chef. Mm. Uh, it's not a fucking brigade. You're not in the army. Yeah. You know, there have been blokes in the army like under fire, being encircled, who don't lose their rag as much as him. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the sign of like being a strong guy. I think it's pathetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fuck you, Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Stop dyeing your hair. <laughs> you look like a bulldog. <laughs> yeah. Hey, anything else you got today? Nope. No, me either. That's it. Let's um, get you some lunch. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Bye.